Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jian Ji Yang. I'm a third year PhD student in the group of uh, nanophotonics and uh, electromagnetism. And my supervisor is uh, Christoph Solon and uh, Philip Lala. I'm going to present my our theoretical investigations of on the uh, optical meter materials with the negative refractive index. Um, uh, my presentation contains three parts. Uh, in the first section, I will explain simply the concept of uh, meter materials, and uh, in the second part, I will explain our theoretical studies of uh, optical fishnet meter materials. And uh, lastly, I will conclude my presentation uh, briefly. Uh, now I start to introduce uh, the concept of uh, electro uh, of uh, meter materials. Um, uh, the the metal materials is a kind of uh, electromagnetic composite materials which exhibit an uh, extraordinary uh, electromagnetic properties including, for example, the, uh, the negative magnetic permeability and, uh, uh, and uh, the, the negative refract index. Uh, and people have proposed a, lot, um, a few uh, potential applications for the metal materials uh, including imagine uh, photonic sensors, uh, photo management, and uh, so on. Uh, here I, here I uh, sh just show two very famous examples. One of uh, the first one is the invi invisibility clock. Um, and meter materials with um, with, um, with um, properly designed uh, optical parameters can can be utilized to render object seemingly invisible. Uh, it appears to any observer that the clocked volume of space is empty. Uh, uh, even with object present there. And the second uh, example is the so-called perfect imaging. Uh, the meter materials with uh, uh, negative refractive index uh, allows the creation of a perfect, perfect lens, which could have a special resolution beyond the diffraction limit. Um, the perfect lens is one of the main reasons that invoked the studies of negative index meter materials, uh, which is the focus of my work. Uh, in order to realize a negative refract index, one has to make the material exhibit both negative, electric, uh, both, uh, uh, negative uh, electric permittivity and uh, negative uh, magnetic permeability uh, the, from a microscopic point of view. The electric permittivity comes from the, uh, the interaction of the electron, ele electric dipoles with the uh, external uh, electric field. And, uh, the magnetic permeability originates from the interactions of the, the magnetic dipoles uh, uh, with, the, with the external magnetic field. Uh, intuitively, the magnetic dipole uh, is generated by, a, by the microscopic current loop. Uh, uh, probably, uh, uh, generally speaking, any metal below it, so the plasma, its plasma frequency shows negative uh, uh, permittivity. However, there is no material in nature that exhibits negative, uh, uh, negative uh, permeability. So, um, uh, uh, John Henry uh, he proposed uh, that in uh, with the proper excitation uh, in the metallic subwavelength splitting resonator, uh, uh, a current loop can be excited. Thus, this uh, resonator can mimic uh, uh, magnetic dipole. Uh, further, this type of resonator is modeled. Uh, it can be modeled as LC resonator, uh, quantitatively, um, and this LC model uh, predicts that the the resonance frequency of the uh, resonance frequency of this resonator is uh, proportional to the inverse of the, the size. Or in other words, the the, 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 the functional wavelength of this resonator is proportional uh, is proportional to its size. Um, uh, there's a classical theory, uh, which is um, the Lorentz uh, model, which describes uh, the, the optical property of the meter mat uh, of the materials um, by treating the electrons and ions in materials as, uh, as uh, uh, harmonic oscillators. Similarly, the, the effective permeability of uh, the array of splitting resonators uh, can be described analytically uh, similar as the the uh, Lorentz model. Uh, around the, uh, the LC resonance of a splitting resonator, uh, such a ray can uh, exhibit a negative uh, permeability. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, collect, uh, 
metallic wire array can mimic a metal <coughs> with, a, with a controllable plasma frequency. Uh, its uh, permittivity can be described in a, by an equation which is similar as the classical Jordan model. And below the, um, the plasma frequency, it uh, shows a negative permittivity. So, uh, so if we can c overlap, those, uh, overlap the spectrum of those two uh, negative quantities uh, by some proper combination of the split resonators and the detector wires, uh, we can probably realize the negative refractive index. The, 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 the first experimentally demonstrated the negative uh, index uh, metal material was fabricated uh, was uh, was fabricated in uh, 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 based on this type of type of design, but uh, based on the spirit resonators and the metallic wires, and uh, it, uh, it it was first uh, firstly fabricated for the microwave spectrum. And, uh, here, and I just uh, stress that the effective parameters for this type of uh, metal material can be described. Uh, analytically, we according uh, based on some classical theories. However, which uh, this is uh, very difficult for optical metal materials. Um, as a, as I have, have already mentioned, the functional wavelengths of the uh, of the split resonators uh, is uh, proportional to its size. So by by directly by directly scaling down the size of this uh, resonator, people can realize uh, uh, very strong magnetic uh, response. Uh, uh, from uh, the uh, spectrum resonator array uh, at terahertz. However, uh, when, we move, uh, when we move to optical frequencies, uh, the, not, all not all, uh, the, the fabrication of the spectrum resonator is very difficult. And uh, there are also many conceptual difficulties, including let's say, the, the saturation of the magnetic, res magnetic response of the, split, uh, of the spectrum resonator. And uh, in the metal, there is um, very high ohmic losses and uh, particularly, there's a there's a, uh, a theoretical problem, which is uh, the homogenization of the metal materials. Uh, the homogenization of uh, metal material uh, is uh, to to defi or determine some uh, uh, effective uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, parameters uh, that could allow people to take the artificial structure as a homogeneous medium. Uh, with, with the same parameters that could reproduce the same optical response. Um, for, uh, for optical uh, uh, metal materials, uh, uh, it is very difficult to, to develop any uh, uh, analytical models like the, uh, li like the uh, uh, microwave metal materials. Uh, so uh, there is a classical method which can treat the homogenization uh, for optical metal materials, which is uh, to uh, extract the effective parameters, uh, the effective uh, permittivity and the effective permeability by, uh, <coughs> for, uh, by the, uh, from the, from the, uh, the reflection and the transmission coefficients of uh, metal material slab. Um, there are a few problems with this, uh, uh, this uh, classical method. Uh, a major one is, um, is that in this retrieval process, all these uh, far field quantities are involved. Um, which means that the light propagation ins uh, the light propagation inside the material is uh, missing. Uh, this drawback actually uh, over overlooks uh, a very crucial condition for homogenization, which is the validity of the single block model approximation. Uh, the, this approximation assumes that uh, inside the metal material only the fundamental block model mediate, med mediates the energy transport. Uh, so in, uh, in other words, if uh, there are more than one mode mediate energy transport, uh, the metal material cannot be homogenized. Um, so, so, if w so, so it is possible that one, uh, 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 one can retrieve some effective parameters of using the classical method. Uh, however, those uh, parameters could be meaningless at all. So we totally abandon this classical method and we propose a new new way to, to retrieve the effective parameters. Uh, we propose to retrieve the, 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 the effective parameters from the light scattering, uh, light scattering on the interface between the free space and uh, infinite uh, metal material. Uh, um, inside the material, inside the metal material, we, we, we simply take the 
effective index of the fundamental block mode as the effective index of the structure uh, when all the, uh, all the high order modes, high order block modes are highly damped. And uh, the plane level reflection of this, inter uh, this interface can offer some information about uh, the impedance of this metal material. So we can further derive the effective uh, um, parameters for this uh, metal material. Uh, we test uh, this uh, proposal with uh, a very famous example, uh, which is the uh, optical fishnet metal material in the following. And now I, now I first uh, explain this uh, uh, test of this our, our proposed uh, new method. And they actually, we also develop a model which can describe the analytical model which can describe the effect index for fishnet metal material. The first is the test of this uh, proposal. Uh, uh, the 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 fishnet the fishnet metal material is a, is 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 a very famous uh, uh, material because it can, it shows very broad band negative index uh, uh, also with with low loss uh, in the in the visible and uh, near infrared spectrum. It uh, it consists of uh, perforated alternating layers of a metallic dielectric thin films. Uh, intuitively, people believe that between two adjacent lay metallic layers, uh, current loops can form, thus providing some magnetic response. And uh, the metallic layer can offer a negative uh, permit uh, permittivity. So, in total, problems, uh, in total, this material can exhibit a negative uh, permitti uh, negative uh, reflective index. Uh, it, uh, this uh, the the first uh, low loss, the first low loss. Uh, a broadband negative index was fabricated by a group in Berkeley. Uh, in their experiment, they made a prism made, uh, they, make, they fabricated a, a prism made of the fishnet material. <coughs> and they mirrored the, the, the angle of the output <coughs> beam. Using Snell's law, they der derived the, the, the effective index of the of fishnet structure, uh, as shown as these, those purple dots in this plot. Uh, clearly, this structure shows some, shows a negative refractive index from 1.5 micrometer to 1.8 micrometer, um, and uh, also this measurement agrees with the calculated effective index of fundamental block mode. This agreement actually uh, in, in, uh, inspires us to test the, the the validity of the finger block mode approximation for this type of structure. Uh, we with this uh, approximation. Let's say we assume this uh, inside uh, all these inside the material all these uh, fundamental block mode uh, media, uh, the tra transport energy. With this approximation, we, we, we calculated the, the, the light transmission and the reflection uh, through a few layers of fishnet uh, metal material, uh, shown, uh, uh, shown as those two figures. Uh, clearly, this single block mode approximation uh, agrees well with the fully vectorial calculation of the transmission and reflection. So now we are very confident to take the effective index of the fundamental block mode as the uh, effective index of the structure. So the next step is to uh, calculate the play wave reflection on the interface between the free space and the infinite fishnet. Using the fractional equation, we can derive the effective permittivity and effective permeability uh, for this type of metal material. We also retrieve the, uh, the effective uh, parameters using the classical method for couple reason, uh, uh, to the two to five, uh, two to fishnet slabs with five and ten unit cells. Uh, clearly, the results by the classical method they all converge to uh, they all converge to the uh, to the result by another proposed method. Uh, uh, what's more, the in those in those results retrieved by the classical method, there are some resonance features. Uh, in fact, those features come from the Fabricable resonance in the finite uh, uh, fishnet slab. Uh, those, uh, those, those resonance features should not appear in the retrieved uh, material parameter effect. Uh, clearly, we have, uh, as an advantage of uh, our method, we can avoid those uh, 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 Fabi Pejo artifacts. Uh, so now, it's uh, clear that we can take the effect index of the fundamental block mode of fishnet. As the as the effective index of the fishnet structure. So, in the following, we 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 make an analytical model for 
the effect index of fishnet uh, uh, meter material uh, for the uh, fundamental block amount of fishnet meter material. Um, in our model, we we, we we assume that the the vertical energy transport inside fishnet is uh, only mediated by the TOM mode of a rectangular metallic hole, and along the horizontal direction, the energy transport is only mediated by a, a gap SPP mode of the metal dielectric metal waveguide. Those two modes they they, they propagate and scatter uh, they scatter uh, propagate and scatter inside um, this material. And uh, using fully vectorial calculation, we 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 calculate the corresponding scattering coefficients of those of those two modes. Uh, here, the reflection and transmission coefficient of those two modes are denoted uh, by rho and uh, tau, uh, ISP, uh, ISP and uh, TSP, respectively. Uh, what's more, those two modes, they can excite each other inside structure. The coupling co coefficient between them is uh, denoted by alpha. Uh, in the following level, show the, show the building up of our, uh, of our analytical model. By uh, progressively, the first I will start with uh, uh, the metallic uh, holes, and then I will analyze uh, with uh, analyze the periodic trace stack, and finally I will analyze the uh, fishnet structure, which is uh, an array of the periodic trace stack. And uh, as a building block of a fishnet, uh, the metallic holes, uh, uh, the, the fundamental mode of a metallic hole chain actually, uh, is a TO1 super mode. Which is an uh, in phase superposition of the TO1 mode of every metallic hole. Uh, here I plot the effective uh, index of all the, of, of the TO1 mode and uh, the fishnet mode uh, uh, by the fully vectorial calculation. And uh, clearly we can see that only at wavelengths is longer than the, the longer than the cutoff wavelength, the fishnet shows negative uh, effective index. And uh, by applying the the reflection and transmission coefficient of the TO1 mode, we, uh, by applying those coefficients into, the, into a set of uh, couple mode equations, we can derive the effective index for the fundamental mode of this uh, periodic chest stack. Uh, this mode is plotted as a green curve here. Uh, clearly, we can uh, see that uh, although, although the, the, the periodic chest shows a bit of negative uh, index, at, at wavelengths is longer than the cutoff wavelength of the TO1 mode. Uh, basically, it's, it's a dispersal behavior is close to the one of the TO1 mode shown as a black curve here. And finally, if we apply all the scattering <coughs> equations into the set of uh, the, the couple mode equations, uh, we can derive the effective index for the fundamental mode of fishnet structure, shown as the uh, red curve in, those, in this figure. Uh, clearly, the, the model prediction uh, quantitatively agrees uh, with uh, with the fishnet <coughs> with, with the uh, fully vectorial calculation. And uh, between the 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 red curve and the green curve, uh, the, there is a very big difference. However, in the calculation of them, the only difference is is the is the is the term gamma here in the calculation of the fishnet. So in order to understand the origin for the brown bed ne negative reflective index in fishnet, we should analyze this, uh, this new term, gamma. Uh, gamma here actually it describes the propagation of the, 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 the gap plasma horizontally. And it's a coupling uh, with the, uh, the, 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 the TO1 mode in the metallic holes. In the denominator of, this, uh, of, of gamma, there is a phase there's a phase delay term which consists of the propagation constant of this gap, gap SPP and the X, X period of the fishnet. Uh, when this phase delay term set, uh, fulfills some uh, phase matching condition, it shows a very strong resonance. Uh, uh, so, uh, this uh, horizontal or plasmal resonance can affect the light transport, uh, the, the vertical light transport in the metallic holes uh, significantly. Uh, Thus, we can observe very big difference uh, between the, the 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 green and the red curve around the resonance of the, the gamma. Uh, so now, the origin of the negative uh, uh, reflection, a negative reflection index in fishnet, can be understood as the 
uh, the, the strong uh, resonance of the of the of the gap plasmon. And uh, phenomenologically, this, uh, uh, this 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 plasmon resonance can be understood as uh, a very strong magnetic uh, resonance system, uh, which can be further quantified by the uh, 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 negative uh, magnetic permeability. As we have already make a very accurate, uh, very accurate model um, for the effect index of fishnet, we also try to use this model to design, to design fishnet in further. Uh, the in the model there are two, two, three parameters. One is X period, and another one is the thickness of a metallic layer. Uh, here I show uh, show uh, a few uh, theories of calculation for fishnet with three different X periods. This uh, parameter mainly affects the phase matching condition in gamma resonance in, the, in, in gamma, so it basically can shift the resonance spectrum of the, uh, the, 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 the spectrum of the magnetic resonance. So further we can tune the spectrum of uh, negative uh, uh, refractive index by, sh by changing this term, as uh, shown as the, those two figures, uh, basically when we increase the this X period is a, uh, we shift uh, the spectrum of negative reflection to longer wavelengths. Uh, the loss is always an important <coughs> issue in the plasmonic structures. We also analyze the loss in fishnet using our analytical model. Uh, so as we have uh, already understood, the origin for uh, the, 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 the the resonance of the gamma is uh, the origin for the broadband negative index in fishnet. So if we can, pro so if we can uh, increase the, the quality factor of this resonance, probably we can reduce the loss in fishnet. Uh, so uh, uh, the, 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 the quality factor of this resonance uh, is, uh, is the ratio between the, the real part of the, the propagation constant of the gap plasma with uh, twice of its imaginary part. And uh, people also define a term figure merit form uh, to quantify the loss in this meter material. This term is defined as the ratio between the real part of the uh, effective index on meter material with uh, the imaginary part. A typical value for Q is uh, for, the, for, for the quality factor of the gamma resonance is about uh, 35 for fish that uh, with a slightly thicker metallic layer than the fishnet designed by the Berkeley group. Uh, correspondingly, the peak value for the form is about uh, six, as confirmed both by the model prediction and the rigorous calculation. Uh, so in, in order to improve the Q, in order to improve the Q, we, we have to change this, uh, uh, we have to change the propagation constant of the gamma plasma. So we can change either the we can change either the thickness of the dielectric spacer or we change the material. Uh, here I show the example uh, for fishnet with uh, three different uh, uh, thicknesses of uh, dielectric spacer. Uh, when we increase the dielectric spacer from 40 nanometer to 75 nanometer, the quality factor imp increases from 30 to 40. Uh, well at the same time, the, the peak value of form just increases basically from six to about seven. Uh, and uh, we cannot uh, improve the Q or a form significantly by, by changing the material uh, noise. So we, we, can, we, we, we learn that uh, the just by, uh, just by uh, performing some geometrical tailoring or changing the material, it, it is impossible to improve the Q or the form very, very significantly. So uh, finally, so finally we try to improve the, the, the performance of fishnet by uh, embed some game, game medium inside the dielectric material of fishnet. Uh, here we, uh, we take out into the, uh, the, the, the game um, simply by setting the, um, the imaginary part of the, uh, the refractive index of the dielectric material as a negative. Um, since we set the gain value to be very small, the scattering coefficients in the model Basically, they stay independent of, on the gain. Uh, so only one uh, addition. So, so we just need to perform a, one additional calculation, which is uh, the propagation constant of the of uh, the gap 
a plasma in a plasmodic uh, in, in a metallic in metal dielectric metal plasmodic waveguide uh, with, uh, with with some gain medium embedded in the dielectric core. Uh, here, as shown by the calculation, uh, basically the the real part of this propagation constant is independent of the gain. Uh, uh, well, the imaginary part of this propagation constant is uh, uh, drops uh, rapidly when they increase from zero to point zero two, and uh, this plasma <coughs> even becomes a bit defying when the gain is around point zero two. Uh, at the meantime, the the quad effect of the gamma resonance increases from uh, thirty five to eight hundred, then get increased from zero to point zero two. Uh, the uh, correspondingly, the the real part of the fishnet, uh, the real part of the effective index of fishnet stays almost an unchanged. It uh, keeps negative uh, value in the spectrum of interest, uh, while the imaginary part of the effect index drops apparently when they get increased. And uh, this fishnet actually becomes a bit amplifying uh, in the spectrum from 1.75 micrometer to 1.85 micrometer. And uh, also the light transmission through the fishnet uh, is enhanced when the gain increases from uh, uh, zero to point zero two. This uh, enhancement is, let's say, based about four times. Uh, so lastly, I will conclude the, my presentation briefly. Uh, the uh, first of all, we, we, we the scat is a single interface scattering and it allows us to pr propose a new method for deriving. Uh, some the effective optical parameters of for, for optical metal materials, and uh, secondly, we we we, we developed a semi-analytical model to analyze the light transporting fishnet, and uh, both the real part and the imaginary part of the fundamental fishnet bluff model can be accurately uh, uh, predicted over a very broad spectrum range. Spectral range. Uh, uh, third, third one. Uh, thirdly, the the negative reflection in fishnet can be understood as uh, as is a, uh, as origina originating from a, a resonant excitation of the gap plasma mode in the horizontal uh, direction of the fishnet, and uh, this mode can provide a quantitative uh, picture of the magnetic resonance. Uh, so, lastly, this model can can be used to study the impact of various uh, geometrical and uh, material parameters on the negative reflection, and uh, what's uh, and particularly it can can be utilized to analyze the case uh, of uh, loss compensation by some, uh, by some uh, uh, include in inclusion of the gain medium in fishnet. Uh, thank you all.